Helen Keller by Jane Sutcliffe Selection illustrated by Robert Papp Tuscumbia, Alabama, 1886 Helen Keller reached out. She touched warm, coarse hair. Her busy fingers moved farther down. They felt something smooth and wet. Slap! A hairy tail smacked into Helen's face. Helen could not see her family's milking cow, but she liked touching it. Helen Keller had been blind and deaf for most of her life. The only way she knew the world was by touch, taste, and smell. Helen was born in 1880 in Tecumseh, Alabama. When she was just a baby, she became very sick. The illness took away her sight and hearing. Helen could not hear her brother's laughter or her mother's voice. She could not see her father's smile or the pretty flowers outside her window. For Helen, there was only silence and gray darkness. To learn to speak, children need to hear words. But Helen could not hear anything, so she could not speak. Instead, she made motions. When she wanted her mother, she put her hand against her face. When she wanted her father, she made the motion of putting on a pair of glasses. When she was hungry, she pretended to slice and butter bread. Helen knew she was different from the rest of her family. They moved their lips when they wanted things. Sometimes Helen stood between two people as they talked. She held her hands to their lips. Then she tried moving her own lips, but still no one understood her. That made Helen angry. Sometimes she screamed and cried and kicked for hours. She threw things and hit people. But it didn't change anything. She was still alone in silence and darkness. Helen was hard to control. Her parents didn't know how to help her. They took her to doctors. None of the doctors could help Helen see or hear again. When Helen was six, a doctor suggested the Kellers visit Alexander Graham Bell. Dr. Bell was famous for inventing the telephone. He also taught deaf people. Dr. Bell told the Kellers to write to Michael Anagnos in Boston. Mr. Anagnos was the head of the Perkins Institute for the Blind. He believed Helen could learn how to let out the thoughts locked inside her. Mr. Anagnos promised to send Helen a teacher. Helen and Teacher, March, 1887 Helen's teacher came to live with the Kellers that spring. Her name was Annie Sullivan. Annie had studied at the Perkins School. She was nearly blind herself. Annie needed to control Helen's wild behavior so she could teach her, but Helen did not understand that Annie wanted to help her. For two weeks, Helen fought with Annie. She hit Annie and knocked out one of her front teeth. She even locked Annie in an upstairs room. Mr. Keller had to get a ladder and let Annie out through a window. Still, Annie did not give up. Little by little, Helen learned to trust her new teacher. Annie began to teach Helen about words. She spelled words using her fingers. Her hand formed a different shape for each letter. She pressed each shape into Helen's hand. When she gave Helen some cake, she spelled C-A-K-E into Helen's palm. When Helen held her doll, Annie spelled D-O-L-L -L for Helen. Helen imitated the shapes. She thought it was a game. She didn't know that the shapes spelled words. After a month, Helen could spell whatever Annie spelled, but Helen still did not know that she was naming the things she touched. Annie finger spelling into Helen's hand. One day, Helen and Annie walked to the well house. Someone was pumping water. Annie pushed Helen's hand into the rushing water. Helen felt the cool water on one hand. She felt her teacher's fingers, spelling W-A-T-E-R, into her other hand. Over and over, Annie spelled the word. Suddenly, Helen stood very still. All at once, she understood. The liquid flowing over her hand had a name. It was W-A-T-E-R. Everything had a name. Helen wanted to learn them all. She ran from one thing to another. Annie spelled the name of everything Helen touched. Then Helen turned and pointed to Annie. T-E-A-C-H-E-R, spelled Annie. 
From then on, Helen's name for Annie was Teacher. That summer, Helen learned a lot of new words. She stopped using her old motions. Her fingers gave her all the words she needed. Annie did not teach Helen words one at a time. She talked to her in full sentences. That way, Helen learned more than just new words. She learned new ideas. Helen and Annie took long walks through the woods and along the river. Annie gave Helen lessons on the walks. She showed Helen how seeds sprout and plants grow. She made mountains out of mud and taught Helen about volcanoes. Sometimes they climbed a tree and had a lesson there. Helen was hungry for knowledge. She wanted to learn everything Annie could teach her. Soon Annie started teaching Helen how to read. The words were printed in raised letters for a blind person. Helen felt the words with her fingers. She liked to hunt for words she knew. When she learned to read better, she read her books over and over. Her curious fingers wore down the raised letters. Helen also learned to write. She wrote letters to her family and Dr. Bell. She wrote many letters to Mr. Agnosis in Boston. Mr. Agnosis was amazed by how much Helen had learned. He published some of Helen's letters. Reporters began to write about Helen. Soon she was famous. People all over the world wanted to know about the Miracle Girl, and Helen wanted to know all about the world.